For the next 30 minutes, we will explore the unexplained. From mysteries beyond our galaxy, to ghostly phenomena in our own backyard, we will dive into our psychic abilities and explore everything from conspiracies to the just plain weird. Welcome to 30 Odd Minutes. If the truth is out there, we will find it. But only by sheer accident. Yay! Yeah! Yeah! Yeah, Woohoo! Welcome back to 30 Odd Minutes. It is great to be with you. I'm Jeff Belandre, your tour guide through the unexplained and the mysterious and the just plain odd. Thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate you as always. Want to remind you guys, if you're watching us, if you're following us on Twitter, on Facebook, on MySpace, also sign up for our email newsletter at 30oddminutes.com. We'll email you once a week on the day of the show, let you know about the upcoming guest and uh, every other thing that's going on that's good in the world. If you're watching our show live at the website, jump in the chat room because Sarah, Rob, and Oddbot3000, how are you guys? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. I'm very good. <laughs> awesome. Sarah, Rob, and Oddbot are waiting to pass your questions up to myself, up to our guests. You can join in the discussion because you're a part of it. That's how this goes. I'm so excited about tonight's show. I've been waiting for it since 1863. Since uh -huh. 18... Uh -huh. Oh, man. This is Medium. a tough crowd tonight. Tough crowd tonight. Uh, we had a crazy week this past week. Oddball Rob and I went to a party in Foxborough, Massachusetts. And uh, boy, were we surprised. You could just knock us over with a feather. Rob and I walked into this building, and it was a surprise party for 30-odd minutes, and they threw a football game in our honor. Do we have the School picture? Saints. Look at this. <laughs> Look at that. There we are, throwing up our signs. Yeah. They said, sit up here so you can see everything. And uh, the New England Patriots and Saints um, played a football game in honor of 30-odd minutes. So thank you to both teams for putting on quite a show. Thank Thanks, you to Bill. The, thank you to coaches. Yeah. Kind of a big deal. Appreciate it. Patriots, whole theme here tonight, whole theme. You can write to us at info at 30oddminutes.com, and we did get an email this week. Sarah, what did it say? Oh, it's full of love. It says, the internet is saturated with paranormal blogs and podcasts, but I have to say that I'm thoroughly enjoying 30 Odd Minutes. It's not only a well-informed show, it's a lot of fun to watch. The mixture of knowledge and humor keeps the subject of the paranormal fun, and not at all the same run-of-the-mill information you find so prevalent elsewhere. I've really enjoyed the interaction you have with your guests and those weighing in in the chat room. Keep up the good work, 30 odd. Love, April Slaughter. We love you, April. Oh, Thank you. Did we have to pay her for that? Thanks, April. Shh. What did that cost us? Good God. Yeah. That was a good one. It was All right. worth it. She could have gone on and on, and we could have kept listening, <laughs> so we appreciate it. Write to us. We want to hear your gripes, too, and your field reports. Send those in. Info at 30oddminutes.com, and we'll get right to them. Okay, tonight's show, this is an amazing topic. You can't cross-reference the topic of ghosts and war in the database of human consciousness without coming up with one word. Gettysburg. July 1st through 3rd, 1863, the North and South collided in this little town in Pennsylvania, and we know all about it since. It's an amazing place. It's an amazing story. And tonight's guest is just the guy to tell us all about the haunts there. Uh, Gettysburg is considered one of the most haunted places in the world. You know that uh, because of the history of the haunts, and no one knows them better than tonight's guest. He's a former National Park Service ranger and historian. He wrote his first book, If the South Won Gettysburg, in 1978 and has penned many more since. In 1991, he published his first Ghosts of Gettysburg book uh, that would go on to become a best-selling series. He owns and operates the Ghost Tour in Gettysburg since 1994. His stories have been heard and seen on the History Channel, Travel Channel, A&E, Unsolved Mystery, and tonight he's all yours to share his experiences and evidence with you. Live from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, please put your hands together for Mark Nesbitt. Yeah. Hey! Yeah. Come on! Woohoo! Mark, thank you for being with us. Hey, my pleasure, Jeff. All right. So uh, this is so cool. It's great to have you here. Uh, we saw each other just last month, and we're going to get to that in a little bit in the show. But let's start with this Battle of Gettysburg. Can you, can you set the stage just how brutal was this conflict back in July of 1863? It's pretty much beyond everybody's imagination. You can't, you can't conceive of how, how horrible it was, both uh, the battle itself and any aftermath. The uh, casualties, 51,000 casualties. Um, I don't know if you listened uh, at all to your um, the, the number of people that were at the stadium there, but I know Yankee Stadium, the new Yankee Stadium, holds 52,000. So can you imagine all those men, killed, wounded, missing, helpless men, dropped down on a little village of 2,400, 
Uh, and then the armies, of course, march away. The, the horror was just inconceivable, really. You can't picture what it was like. Um, every, every public building, they, they, they tore out the uh, seats in the courthouse, threw them outside. That became a, um, an operating room and a hospital. That, that was their brand new courthouse, too. It was just built in 1858. So uh, they, they, the other churches, they drilled holes in the floor of some of the churches to, to let the blood drain out from the operations. Many uh, private buildings also. And, uh, of course, Gettysburg College was called Pennsylvania College at the time. Uh, many of the buildings there were filled to capacity with wounded soldiers, both Union and Confederates. So you had both uh, sometimes lying side by side, right next to each other, suffering through this uh, through the heat of July, 1863. Right. Um, the battle was just was was. I mean, as I said, inconceivable to us. Yeah. Right. And so the aftermath, as you said, these forces pull out after three days. Uh, I mean, how long did Gettysburg have to deal with the bodies and the carnage that was laying all around there? Well, you had the uh, Union soldiers that were killed, buried. Uh, well, let me put it this way. Every soldier that was killed at Gettysburg or died at Gettysburg was buried at least twice. The Union soldiers were buried. All the soldiers were buried out on the battlefield where they fell. The Union soldiers then began, they began exhuming the bodies and taking them up to Cemetery Hill uh, and burying them there. Later on, that then became the uh, National Cemetery um, and was dedicated and consecrated in November of 1863 by... Abraham Lincoln with the famous Gettysburg Address. Right. Then, then you had the Confederates, though. They were buried out on the battlefield uh, until the 1870s in unconsecrated graves. And, of course, this is one of the religious theories why there may be um, ghosts at Gettysburg because so many were buried in unconsecrated graves until the early 1870s. And then they were shipped, uh, the bodies or what was left of them which were finally shipped home uh, to the southern cemeteries. Right, right. Okay, so actually I want to read a bit of the, the Gettysburg Address because I think one part of it is so poignant uh, where President Lincoln said, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men living and dead who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. Uh, you know, when you talk about it being haunted, I think that kind of sums it up. It's hallowed ground. It was hallowed as of July 3rd, 1863. It's still hallowed today. And in some ways, Gettysburg is still dealing with the aftermath of this battle uh, because the park's still there, all these monuments, it's amazing. Well, one of the theories about why ghosts linger is because the living can't let go. You know, we can't let go of them. And 1.6 million people come every year to Gettysburg as visitors, as tourists, but basically what do they do? They mourn because they go to these sites Little Round Top, they go to the National Cemetery, they go to these places, and they think deeply about what these men suffered and did for the, uh, the American uh, people for, from today. Right, right. Now, it's obvious from your background that you have a love of history, but at what point do you make the leap from history to ghosts? It, it, it's actually not a, so much a leap as kind of a, a, a nice transaction because, you know, the way I wrote my books, I wrote the history of the site and then I wrote what, you know, the ghost stories of that particular site. And they always seem to tie in. I don't think it's a good, I, you can't just tell a ghost story. It's like walking down the street and somebody jumps out of the bushes and goes, boo. Okay, well, you're, you're scared for about two seconds and then you see it's your idiot brother-in-law. But if you know about this woods that you have to walk past this night and uh, you know that someone was murdered in there and buried in there, the history of the site, they never found the body, and you're walking past, and all of a sudden you hear a rustling in the leaves. Uh, it means a little bit more, I think, than just having somebody jump out of the, out of the bushes and, and yell at you. Right, right. Now, your early books, uh, Ghosts of Gettysburg, which of course you know, led to the tours and all the other stuff, um, when I read your early books, there's a very journalistic approach, which I appreciate. However, at some point, uh, I, I, and I also appreciate this, you, you make the transition from chronicler and journalist of ghost stories and history to ghost researcher, full-on paranormal investigator, ghost hunter, rock on my brother. How did that happen? Uh, you found me out, Jeff. Yeah, right. That, uh, you know, it's interesting because when I first started collecting the stories, it took me 12 or 13 years to get enough stories for the first book. Within two weeks, I started getting phone calls and letters from people saying, 
uh, you know, here's what happened to me. I never had a paranormal experience before, but here's what happened to me when I came to Gettysburg and visited. And, you know, now by now I've collected over a thousand stories on Gettysburg. All these people can't be delusional. This phenomenon can't just be a one or two time event. It keeps happening. And I want to know why. I mean, we're going on a couple generations now, you know, that have, since the early 1960s and 70s when I heard my first ghost story, ghost stories about Gettysburg. And it keeps happening. All right, what's the phenomenon? Now I want to know. Now I'm very, very interested in, uh, still interested in the history, more interested now in the phenomenon of the, uh, of, of the event, uh, paranormal, ghosts, whatever you want to call it. Right, right. Okay, Mark, we do have a question for you in our chat room. Rob, do tell. Uh, hi, Mark. Uh, Brianna Whitney would like to know what is the most paranormally active part of Gettysburg? Most paranormal part of Gettysburg. That's a good question. That is a good question, and, and um, it changes, believe it or not. I know um, a couple of years ago, Spangler Spring, I was getting a lot of reports from Spangler Spring of strange things happening, in particular um, shadow people, uh, shadow creatures being seen out there. Um, and then, but it, but it moves around quite a bit. It's different areas of the, of the battlefield at different times, which is, you know, pretty much appropriate to paranormal activity. Some nights a building is very, very active, other, day, other days or nights it's not. But, but consistently, consistently, I think Devil's Den and, and an area called the Triangular Field, you can get probably more uh, phenomenon happening there, and especially uh, things that happen to your cameras or uh, uh, recordings or things like that at Devil's Den or the Triangular Field. Just why, I don't know, but they seem to be the most consistently uh, paranormally active places. So, okay, one point we talked about is, um, we've talked about in the past, is residual hauntings. The idea that sometimes what you're seeing is not intelligent or interactive, it's history replaying itself like a movie. It's also called the stone tape theory, the idea that the stone itself, the environment, has recorded an event and replays it. One question I have, with over a million people coming to Gettysburg each year, most of them history buffs to some varying degree, many of them paranormal buffs as well, do you think they're kind of charging that environment, that, that, um, that emotion? Is that charging up that environment to let it replay again and again? Uh, I have no doubt. Yeah, that's, there's, there's definitely an energy that they bring to Gettysburg. Uh, that, uh, you know, a place like, for example, we were just in Appomattox just this last uh, uh, week, and they only get 350,000 visitors a year. So you know there's more energy flowing into Gettysburg. And it seems like you know, I hate to uh, uh, sound like make it sound like Gettysburg is a vortex or anything, but the soldiers themselves felt it. There were battles that were that in the in the Civil War impressed them as more uh, horrifying. I don't know how you could do that, but it, some of them were impressed with other battles. But Gettysburg, they always chose uh, to put their monuments at, and uh, so I think there's a there's maybe something a little bit more than just the number of people that come to Gettysburg. Maybe the other question is, why are, are all those people drawn to Gettysburg? Right. No, that is a good question. And when you go there, I mean, I don't consider myself psychically sensitive whatsoever. I've been to Gettysburg a number of times now. When you stand on those battlefields, when you have any kind of understanding of what took place right at your feet, you feel something. That's not psychic. That's being a human being connecting with other human beings who died for a cause. And, you know, these guys, I, I don't think at the time of battle, they're thinking about God and country. They're thinking about pushing that front line another couple of feet. If they don't do it, the guy behind them has to do it. And if he doesn't do it, so on and so on, eventually all the way back to your homestead where your family is and, and your way of life and all of that stuff. But just an amazing feeling being there. And, and I think maybe because it is hollowed ground, maybe that... that perk something up in us if maybe we're all psychic to some degree I'm sure that's part of it but uh, another aspect to Gettysburg is there are reenactors everywhere it's to the point where you sometimes you're walking through the battlefield and you walk up to people and you give them you know one of these yeah oh there's there's <laughs> there's solid it's cool you know but these reenactors have experiences how many reenactors are coming to you with stories uh, a lot as a matter of fact when the uh, they made the film uh, Gettysburg a number of years ago in the 1990s they had an encampment just on the, well, you can't really say it was the edge of the battlefield because troops were out there, too, where they encamped. And I got 13 pages of notes from 
one one guy who was out there, and I'm still getting stories about that uh, feature film. In fact, one of the chapters in in the book that I'm finishing up now, Ghosts of Gettysburg, seven, um, is um, is 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 on the feature film. So you know you you've got a lot going out there, all sorts of things going at Gettysburg. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, we do have another question for you in the chat room, Mark. Sarah? We do. We have a lot, actually. Uh, so this one's from Alex B 93 He wants to know what's the most common sighting that people report a lot. Is, is it usually a whole regiment, or is it just a couple of soldiers, one particular soldier? Did you get that, Mark? Most common sighting? Yeah. Well, the... The most common sighting is is actually sounds. Okay. <laughs> we we Fair hear enough. a ghost. Uh, of, of all the thousand stories that I've collected, sixty percent are auditory. Only about ten percent are visual. So uh, you're going to hear a ghost at Gettysburg before you see one. But that having been said, the most common sighting uh, that 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 Phantom Regiment. You know, we like you and I talked about it. That is a very uh, I have at least five or six different accounts of that. The woman in white at Spangler Spring is another one, um, and uh, so so those are those are fairly common. I'm trying to think of one other just to round it out here, um, but that, the, those are the most common I, I think as far as seeing things. And of course, individual soldiers periodically are seen. I always ask what time of year. If it's Fourth of July, he's probably a reenactor. If they tell me, well, it was November and he disappeared in front of our very eyes in the middle of the field. That's something reenactors have not been able to accomplish yet, so. Right, and, and here's the thing too, with ghost experiences that are tangible, um, when you get tangible evidence, something that's left behind, that's the most incredible part of this research. And you told me a story years ago, and last month I, I had the pleasure of being in Gettysburg, and the pleasure of being with you, Mark, and you took us out to a, a building that was an actual field hospital during the battle and told us an amazing story. I got to film that story, and we're actually going to roll it right here. What we are pretty sure is the operating room uh, when this was a hospital. Why? Southern exposure. This gets the most sun of any of the rooms, and it's bright. So, if I'm a surgeon, I'm going to be standing right here. The operating table, if that's what you want to call it, probably be a door on a couple barrels all around the room and out into the hall are the wounded soldiers waiting for their turn. And as I told you before, it was probably going to be an amputation. I would amputate, if I'm the surgeon, I'd amputate the arm or the leg, hand it to the orderly. The orderly would take it over to one of the windows, toss it outside. Okay. Um, then the next person would come up, lie on the table. They usually ran out of morphine, opium, they gave you a shot of army whiskey, if they had that. The surgeons prided themselves on the fact that they could amputate a limb within three, four minutes. If you are on this table without any anesthesia, you're happy that the guy's only taken three or four minutes to cut off your arm and soften the bone and so it all up. Um, at any rate, I'm pretty sure this is where the table was because of the light. We have blood stains in here. Right there, I'm sorry, this kind of, you kind of see the, the outline of a, maybe a leg going down there and a buttocks here. That's a lot, of, actually a lot of blood, now that poor guy. And in one other place, which is very, very interesting, right over here, you can actually see four fingerprints and a thumbprint. Okay, there's the thumb, there's the four fingers. See? Thumb, mm -hmm. um, four fingers. Some guy was sitting right here. I said, come on, son. And he put his hand down like that, covered with blood, and pushed himself up. And moved over the operating table. And in this room uh, is where I had probably the weirdest um, paranormal experience in my life. And, and as Jeff can tell you, we get into some pretty weird things. <laughs> And uh, this was really weird. Uh, we were, Carol and I were at, um, at our place, uh, where you guys were, and I got a phone call. And it was from the caretaker here. He said, Mark, if you want to see a paranormal experience occurring right before your very eyes, come on out to the lady farm. Hope to pass that up, right? Throw the gear in the car, drive out here, 
and I'm thinking, knocking on the door out there, thinking, you know, is something going to fly out of me? What's going to happen? So the caretaker comes to the door, and he says, Good morning, Mark, I have to show you this. He said, yesterday we had a group of Confederate reenactors. I gave them a tour of the building. Everything was fine. I said, what's going to happen when we open this door? He says, I'm not going to say anything. You just come on in and take a look. So I walked through this door. Right here, there were three or four streams of a rust-colored liquid flowing towards the, the uh, fireplace. A, a clear serum was separating out, and there were droplets all around that seemed to be crystallizing. I took photos. Put your stick down. I took photos, mm -hmm. and was looking at them. And I'm like, and I'm looking up here at the ceiling. I'm thinking, what's going on? Is there like, did a pipe break, and that's you know rusty water? Did something break underneath? He goes, no. So I recorded everything. Took stills. Took video. I said, well, my job here is done. I, I don't know what to do. I said, but I said, do you have a tissue? And then collects the sample. So I dipped it in that, put it in a baggie, took it out to the car. He said, I gotta go out and work. I got stuff to do out in the, out in the fields. I said, okay, see ya. Two hours later, I get another phone call. Carol's there. I get another phone call. Two words. It's gone. What? He says, it's gone. Come on out. Get some more pictures. It's another something going on. So I zoom out here. Come in here, and, and it looks like this. And he says, it was right here, right? I have a video of this. And he says, it was right here, right? He goes, what the hell? He's got a thin, thin layer of dust on his fingers. I'm like, what in the heck just happened here? First of all, I just showed you bloodstains, okay, that can't be removed. Okay, whatever this was, I'm thinking, it should still be here. What about the sample? Carol runs out to the car, grabs the baggie, it's still intact. Now, the GBPA is pretty well connected. We sent these samples off to the uh, probably the most prestigious forensics lab in, uh, in, in the country. Three weeks later, the results came back. The substance, the stuff you saw, was blood. The species was human. All that blood you saw was human blood. And it disappeared, which just vanished. Um, like I said, 140 years, poor Mrs. Lady was using lye soap and everything she could possibly use on it, plus subsequent farm wives are trying to get this stuff up. You can't get it up. This doesn't come up out of wood floors. So, that was the weirdest thing that's happened to me so far. Wow. Amazing story. I remember the first time, Mark, that you told me that, uh, and I was, it was incredible to actually be where it happened, see those blood stains. Our audience saw them, too, on the floor, still there. But to have something materialize, that's incredible evidence when it comes to paranormal research. I don't know about you, Jeff, but I smell Oscar for cin cinematography. So. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Emmys, Oscars, maybe even a Tony Award, if nothing else. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, we should have should done a musical dance. But um, all right. So <laughs> yeah, you rattled me. <laughs> that was good. All right. So you also sent us some EVP that you've collected um, over the years. Tell us about this first one. Well, this one was... Um, we're lucky enough to be good friends with the folks that own the Cash Town Inn, mm -hmm. uh, another uh, very, very historic and very haunted place. And uh, we were allowed to go down in their basement, which nobody ever gets to go down there, to do uh, an investigation. We've been allowed on, our, on what we call our Mysterious Journeys weekends to do that. And one of our mediums told me that there was a Confederate soldier named Andrew uh, that wanted to talk with me. And I wanted to know if he's a Confederate soldier, okay, what state is he from? Right. And so that's what I asked. All right, let's take a listen. Andrew, what state are you from? 
Andrew, what state are you from? That's amazing. Right at the end, you can hear Mississippi. I mean, that's, yeah. uh, I, I'm, you know, these EVP things, nine out of 10, I hear them and it just sounds like garble to me. But when I heard that, you know, Mississippi, those of you, if you're watching live, you can, of course, check out our show again tomorrow um, on demand for free. You can listen to it over and over. Pretty compelling stuff. What about the second one? Um, now, this one was done up in our building. We, as you know, we have a, a Civil War building that we run our ghost tours out of. Right. The second floor back room seems to be the most active. And uh, our resident ghost there is a woman who owned it longer than anyone. She, her name is Mrs. Kitzmiller. She and my wife, Carol, get into these arguments periodically about whether she should have cookies there or not for our guests. We brought some cookies up, but they weren't to her standards. So I asked her, Mrs. Kitzmiller, what did you think of the cookies? And you can hear the results. All right, let's take a listen. This is Kitz Miller. I understand you didn't like our little tiny cookies the other night. You don't like those? This is Kitz Miller. I understand you didn't like our little tiny cookies the other night. You don't like those? <laughs> Apparently, she doesn't like them. Right at the end, you hear, I hate them. I hate yeah, them. Yeah, and uh, I was not the first one. I didn't want to say anything when I, when I heard it, and the woman right next to me burst out. She said, I heard I hate them. So what kind of cookies were they? Uh, they were very bad cookies. <laughs> <laughs> clearly, clearly. Very old. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Tell us about this third one. Um, we were in the engine house at mm -hmm. the uh, Gettysburg and Northern Railroad. We're lucky enough to be able to get in there and do some investigations. It was interesting because we had a lot of the uh, uh, railroad executives with us. And they, some of them thought this was a lot of hooey. You know, this ghost stuff, even though that place turns out to be one of the most haunted areas in Gettysburg. And um, so I was getting very, very, very loud EVP. You've gotten that, I'm sure, and it's just disturbing and you can't get anything out of it. So I asked this one ghost that we were talking to to be if she could be a little more quiet and you can hear the results. All right, let's hear it. Emma, when you're talking to us, could you do a little more quietly? I know it's difficult to do this but you're a little bit loud. If you could talk a little more softly, we might be able to hear you better. Thank you, Emma. God bless you. <laughs> you hear, I'll be quiet. <laughs> right there in the yeah, and, then, and then you thank her, which was very cordial of you. <laughs> yeah, well, she kind of whispers, and that was great, then. I'm glad she did that. Yeah, so. yeah, awesome stuff. This is, I mean, it's incredible, that the research that you get. Gettysburg's such a hotbed. Uh, and not only that, you've got five ghost tour companies in town. That's amazing in such a small town. You've been there for so long. Uh, I've taken your tour. It's great. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's amazing history. Thanks. And you're such a great resource there. You've got number seven coming out in the series? Ghost of Gettysburg 7 is coming out very, very soon. And uh, we're coming out with a book on EVP as well, which will be, uh, be able to be downloaded from the Internet. Oh, that's excellent. Very good. And I know you're also starting things up. You've got something going in uh, Fredericksburg, Virginia, correct? We have ghost tours of Fredericksburg as well, and I encourage anyone that wants to to come on down and take those. We'll have to do another show on the ghosts of Fredericksburg, no doubt at all. Um, but very good. Mark, we are running right up against the, uh, the end of time here. It's gone so fast, and really appreciate you being with us tonight. Um, great stuff, great resource. It's just so good to know that someone who takes history as such a sacred subject, and the paranormal is equally so, because this is the stage we set the ghosts on. Um, just uh, great to have you with us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much, Jeff, and anytime I'll, I'll come back. All right, sounds good, Mark. I really appreciate it. All right, folks, that's it for tonight. want to remind you guys, keep in touch with us. We love hearing from you. Email us, info at 30oddminutes.com. You can watch the live stream. You can visit us anytime on the web. You can download us from iTunes for free, all for free. We love it. All right, folks, until next time, please stay odd. Yay! That was